Tech is a proud corporate partner of Texas Tech Athletics. There's nothing like it. The excitement of Texas Tech men's basketball. This is KMAC Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Tip-Off. Good morning and welcome into Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Tip-Off. David Collier alongside Eric Kelly this morning as always as we get you ready for the next Red Raider basketball game. Today's game, Texas Tech and yep. Kansas at 1 this afternoon. The Red Raiders looking for their second ever win there in Lawrence. Listen, second ever win. I'm just ready for basketball. Basketball, yeah. All the, you can throw all the stats mm -hmm. out there. Only one stat matters, and that's that the game is actually going, Go, going to, to get played. Exactly. Phil Mayer over there knocking on his wood yep. as well. All right, coming up in the next half hour, the reason we're so excited. This was supposed to be a busy week for Texas Tech before a couple of postponements, but that just means more games have to be made up now. We'll hear what Coach Chris Beards has to say about that and how they plan on making up those games. Also ahead, Beard on where his Red Raiders stand compared to the last time they took on Kansas. And later, our friends from Kansas City catch us up on the week that was with the Jayhawks in the breakdown. We mentioned that the uh, last time we saw Texas Tech on a basketball court 11 days ago, the last image from that game, Chris Beard getting teed up before he being He took a detected. great charge there. Right? And yeah, form I, was great. There was no reason to stick around for the rest of that one. Can't blame him for leaving there. Uh, he got a public reprimand. You might remember that. Since then, the Red Raiders, though, had to, have to sit through last Saturday watching basketball games because, of course, Baylor had that one postponed, only to see two games against TCU this week. Moved around and then eventually postponed it as well, this time because of bad weather. Chance to work on their game, sure, but also a chance to collect a little rust, something you probably don't want to do when you're facing a Kansas team that's maybe starting to turn things around after being unranked last week. Jayhawks back up to 23rd in the polls after winning four straight. Well, it's been unique. You know, it's not just the time off. It's the uncertainty during the time off when the next game was coming. From a coaching standpoint, we were working to prepare, but we've really been hesitant to give the players until we knew, you know, the exact uh, outcome. We were a day into TCU prep. We're now a day into Kansas prep. Um, but we have spent some time. When there was major uncertainty, we were just working on us. If anything, during this break, there's been more, you know, concentration on us, our offense, our defense, the things we can control. And, of course, you mentioned all those games postponed. That's the key word, not canceled, because there's that expectation that you will make up at least some of them. Texas Tech currently with four games postponed in Big 12 play. You got those two against TCU, one against both Iowa State and Baylor, you'd assume you're more eager to make up one of those than the other. Might the big well question the is not if the Red Raiders will make up those games. That seems to be a given. But rather, which games exactly will they end up playing? From my vantage point as the coach, the information that's got to, gotten to us at the coaching level is, you know, the Big 12 created this schedule with the one week for makeup games. It's not just as simple as each school playing their makeup games because some schools have as many as four or five games. Some schools might not have any. Some schools might have two. So Kirby said something about, you know, there's a cap on that. They're not going to let anybody play more than three games that week. That makes sense to me. Whether that starts with the, the level playing field, everybody should have the same number of home games or away games. Maybe that's the way we look at it. Uh, I'm sure the Big 12 is going to look at it from like, what is the best thing we can do to get as many teams in the tournament as we can? Missed opportunity, of course, to ask Coach Beard mm -hmm. at the time, if you wouldn't known that you wouldn't have been able to coach in a game for the next 11 days, <laughs> would you have stuck around to only get one technical? Yeah, right. Well, may maybe. I don't know. I think he did what he planned to do there, right? I think it, was, it was all, all... There was a message. Well, there wasn't a message behind it. But there might have been a message yeah, behind yeah. it. Okay, so Texas Tech welcoming itself back into the Big 12 and getting quite a welcome back with the Kansas Jayhawks. As David mentioned, not the same type of team we saw maybe last year, for instance, when they were the runaway number one overall team in the nation. That happens when you lose Devon Dotson and Idoka Azabuki. But this is a KU team that's getting hot at the right time. Jayhawks, you mentioned four straight. They've won five of the last six. And even though not as many fans able to pack into Fog Allen, this year still a place where Kansas has won nine of its ten games this season. Kansas is uh, peaking at the right time. Uh, you know, five guys averaging double figures. They have an offensive identity, a defensive identity. You know, the expectations and standards of excellence are so strong in Lawrence that 
lose a couple games in a row, it's like the world's ending. But those of us that know this league like myself and know Coach Self and understand the talent on that roster, um, I mean, guys, this is a team that's in the fight for a two seed in the NCAA tournament, could easily be in another Final Four. Now, Kansas, as we mentioned earlier, won the first meeting by one point here in Lubbock back in December. Ochai Abaji scoring 23 for the Jayhawks in that one, including the game winner in the final seconds off of an inbound. Some mis miscommunication there on defense. Because that was very early in the season for Chris Beard's new look roster. It was a Big 12 er er opener, played earlier than normal against a top five team at the time, just eight games into the season. A lot has been learned by this team since that game two months ago. Well, I think we're definitely a better team now than we were in November and December. Uh, no doubt about that. We've got to make that one more push as March nears. And then ultimately we'll have to make that second push to be relative in March. And that's, that's always been by design. When you have new players like us, it's always been kind of a journey for us. So I, I think we, we've got a stronger identity now than we had earlier in the season. It's just time for us to play our best. You know, March is right around the corner. This is how our sport works. This is how this segment works. We fill in the blank with Phil Mayer. You can read his stuff all the time at everythinglubbock.com. All right, Phil. Still always at his best. Always at his best, looking his best because he's not wearing a bow tie. Why are we not? Well, we'll get to that later. All right, Phil. Six straight games scoring in double figures for Marcus Santos Silva. Might have been on some of my teams during that. Uh, the easiest way for him to improve his production is blank. Stay out of foul trouble. And Santos Silva was limited to 14 minutes in that most recent game, the loss to West Virginia. It's been a problem with him all season. He's talked about it. Chris Beard has talked about it. If you look at the three Big 12 games that he's played under 20 minutes in, the two losses to West Virginia in that first meeting against Kansas, foul trouble kept him out for some of that time. And you've got to wonder, could Texas Tech have stolen one or two or all three of those games if Santos Silva was out there? And the first time Texas Tech played Kansas, that big man David McCormick was limited to foul trouble himself. If he's out there a bit more, Today, Marcus Santos Silva is Texas Tech's best chance of guarding him. And I dove deep into Santos Silva's issues with foul trouble in a store. You can find that on everythinglubbock.com under the Red Raider Nation tab. Look at oh, that. He is a right? pro's pro. We're only a couple weeks in. Wow. You thought he might have been rusty after <laughs> not going through this during football season. He'd be wrong. I was actually going to bring that up and tell everybody to go check it out. He beat me to it. All right, Phil, we appreciate it. We'll check back in with you in a bit. <laughs> Time for our first break here on Countdown to Tip Off. Maybe go read a story during this break. Still to come, Eric and I tackle a couple of topics and provide you with a pair of award-winning headlines in this week's Crashing the Boards. Phil Mayer, best salesman around. And later, our friends in Kansas City join us with a look at the recent winning ways of those Jayhawks. 